<laughs> this episode is going to tackle some pretty heavy issues, so if that's not your thing, feel free to click away now. No hard feelings. I've been making videos for quite a while now, and members of my audience, which is substantially larger on other platforms than it is on YouTube, regularly ask me to share more about my life. I'm usually uncomfortable dealing with requests like this, and it's for a number of reasons. Firstly, from an insider's perspective, I don't consider myself particularly interesting. There's also the fact that much of my life is overshadowed by a struggle and hardship, which doesn't make for thrilling entertainment. Nonetheless, a variety of you have asked for this more than once, so here we go. Anyone who has known me for even a short period of time will be aware that I do not and will never use the fact that I have quadriplegic cerebral palsy to play the victim. I do not subscribe to the popular narrative that just because I am part of a minority group, I am directly and consciously oppressed by some grand evil conspiracy. That being said, I will not deny that navigating South African life in a wheelchair is difficult. Much of our architecture and infrastructure is outdated, having been built in the days when people with disabilities weren't expected to participate in public life. This generally means one thing, stairs, lots and lots of stairs. A number of times in my life, I have been invited to places only to realize once I'd already arrived that toilets were on another floor of the building and thus out of my reach. It's tough to be socially engaged when you're worried about not eating or drinking too much because you know you'll have to wait until you get home to relieve yourself. So now, if a venue is inaccessible, I just don't go there. Adding to my sense of isolation is the fact that my reflexes prevent me from driving a car or any other road vehicle. With a few exceptions, South Africa's public transport system is inaccessible, unreliable, and often downright dangerous, which means that unless I can get a ride from someone able to deal with both me and my wheelchair, I ain't taking a lot of trips beyond the old homestead. Spending almost all my time at home has turned me into somewhat of a hermit. So on the occasions when I do venture out, I am always afraid that I'll come across as strange and creepy. If you find it odd that I can have these feelings and yet still possess the confidence to express myself publicly, remember that when I make videos, it's just me on my own talking into a microphone. That doesn't magically endow me with the charisma of a social butterfly. Now, let's take a look at the societal dynamics of South Africa. If you've been living under a rock for the last little while, or more likely just had better things to do with your time, you might not know that things aren't going particularly well for us. This country is in a state of constant flirtation with chaos. Unemployment is high and therefore so is crime. Instead of focusing on the task of actually governing the country, our leaders seem far more concerned with the struggle for personal enrichment and it looks to me as if racial tensions are always simmering just below the surface. Yet another race-related scandal drew the media sharks 
a few days ago when a rugby analyst and former Springbok walked off the set of a live broadcast by Supersport, this country's largest sports channel. Because in his playing days, he'd benefited from a racial equality quota and he felt patronized and disrespected by his two white colleagues. The man in question is colored, which in South African vernacular refers to a distinct racial subgroup and is not an insult. Despite the fact that Supersport later issued a statement saying that in the initial stages of a formal investigation, they have yet to find any evidence of racial discrimination, our Minister of Sport is adamant that the two white analysts are guilty of bigotry and a sense of racial entitlement. In response, one of our largest media groups published this cartoon, which only served to cause further outrage and division. In a situation where both the media and the political class are consciously fueling hatred on the basis of racial identity, I am honestly afraid of what might happen to ordinary people in the years to come and how this continuous strife will impact my future. Put simply, I have enough shit to deal with already and I'm not looking for any more. Even though this wasn't my most cheerful video, I do hope you found some value in my perspective. And if you did, I invite you to support me via PayPal. For now, farewell.